welcome to another black box video. This is video number two. In the first video we put together a song in song mode. Today we're going to be looking at recording our own samples in because that's what this black box is really strong at. It's got excellent audio to vi video or audio analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters. So everything I've done today except for the kick and the snare, which I took from the samples that Black Box included on the SD card. But the rest of these samples are my own that I recorded straight in through the back. So no computer, no nothing, just one analog synthesizer, a Arturia Microbrew, one acoustic guitar, and one Black Box. And we're creating all of this today. So, one of the patches on the Microbrew was a bass and as you can see the longer I hold the keys down you can see how long the sample was but I can play the sample short by simply releasing the key and that is what's called the launch mode of gate with gate depends on how long you hold it down the kick and the snare, those are some of the simplest samples there are. Those are just one shots and those are triggers. Which means it plays through and stops, doesn't loop. So we have a trigger mode. On the bass we have a gate mode and the other kind of sample we're doing is a clip sample. Now these, all these samples are samples, what's called a sample, according to the black box, in this box here. To get to sample mode, you press the pad you want, press info once, press, press the little icon up here that's got the little waveform, and this is where you can change your samples. So on the guitar, you'll find that that was made as a sample as I recorded in but I switched it to a clip so that I could do other things to it. So on the clip mode and miscellaneous you can see loop is on. Quantize is on at one bar. This quantize size one bar is only for the launch. That means at the it's going to launch not in the middle of a measure but at the beginning of a measure. Now you could you can select this to just launch anytime or 1 16th and up to 8 bars. So you could launch this and then it would take 8 bars for it to actually kick in. Today I'm using 1 bar. Uh, MIDI was used to actually play in these notes on a external keyboard. But you can use this keyboard if you wish. So we have three kinds of samples in today. We've got the gate. That's a gate. That's a gate. That's a gate. So the synthesizer's tones, patches that I made on the analog synthesizer, I made a patch, like the bass patch, recorded it in, made another patch, recorded that in, made another patch and recorded that in. Now, the analog synthesizer I'm using is only a monophonic synthesizer, but if you listened carefully at the beginning of this, you heard chords. Well, that sounds like, that's horrible, isn't it? I had a monophonic um, synthesizer. I recorded in one note monophonically because that's all I could record. But once it's in black box, you have four uh, note polyphony. And so what you're listening to here is a triad or three note chord. So 
Also, even though I've got a monophonic synthesizer, by the time I get into Black Box, I'm not limited to mono monophonic playing. So I actually played this in on a keyboard with triads. So that's our synth. So we got two synth patches and one synth bass patch and one guitar. Now you notice the guitar is the only one that doesn't launch here. In pads mode, we get to listen to everything. Now why can't we listen to the guitar? Because that is the clip sample. And in clip mode, you have to have play. The black box has to be running. So turn this sample off. Turn the sample, the sequence I did for the... So now we're getting the guitar to play. And you don't have to use the sequencer to play it with the black box running on play. Yeah. Now I have to hit stop twice to actually get it to stop playing because the first stop will stop sequences. The second stop will stop a, uh, a toggled loop that is There's the launch mode. It's a toggle and it's a loop. So here we are with our just our basic samples. We only got a few samples. Got lots of sequences in here. And this is a, a lesson in the different kinds of samples. Now, there's, there's of course, there's, there's still more to there's still more to learn because we have multi samples, and we actually have an introduction into granular. Granular is a whole different kind of synthesis. I don't think this is a, a deep granular synthesizer. I don't know. I haven't gotten into granular yet, but but we will. That's for sure. So today I'm making all my sounds today out of uh, the just a guitar that was recorded, acoustic guitar, and an analog synthesizer. And Black Box is doing the rest. It's giving me polyphony on a, on a monophonic synthesizer. It's giving me sequencing. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. So, in the sequencer, in the sequencer mode, not the song mode, um, it's best, uh, the last tutorial I did is on song mode. It's best that you follow each tutorial in succession so you don't get confused. If you start on a tutorial 2, 3, or 4, you're going to get confused. So in song sequence modes, if I activate those, I can turn all of them off. You can activate as many as you want. You can see the little white, sur white boxes. That means they're activated. But the little off button will turn them all off. So I'm going to activate just the drums and the bass. So what you're hearing is the, is the drum sample. Now, when you listen to the drum sample, you will notice that it is... It contains a kick and a snare. So those are two separate samples. But in sequencer mode, we can combine any sample into into one into uh, just one sequence, and we have 16 possible sequences. So we're looking at just one sequence right now. That's all off. Make this one active. So we're here in the kick drum and the snare, and I'm going to start the bass on time. If you're watching this bar, so we have a, a melody going in the bass. Now I'm going to start the chords. Now I'm going to wait till this gets within one measure and I'm going to start the guitar. I 
let's start a sequence. A lead. Now let's get even more tricky. What you what I want you to watch now is watch the watch this bar going, but I have this sequence selected. These sequences down here are four bars. Let's turn these all off. This sequence here is four bars long. See Four. See the counter there? Counter over there counted up to four. And the bass loop is four. Watch the counter here and watch the bar. So it loops back on that fourth measure. Uh, all of these are four measures. I also have a second a second uh, drum loop and it again is four bars long watch the counters the only difference between that drum loop is a little bit of snare at the end of that fourth measure now when we come up to these other sequences this one this one is uh, eight bars long so watch what happens with this one Watch the counters. Five, six. And it loops back. Now this all works together in, in the four force timing because this sequence is twice as long as those sequences so I can keep everything in timing because because I recorded this guitar strum because I recorded this guitar strum as you listen to it there's a chord progression in there so I had to be extra careful in my sequences to make sure that my bass matched matched in the in the number of bars and timing with the with the guitar. So you're going to see the bass and the guitar working together, and you're going to see the little bars here, the bar here, and the measures. We got. We got three things to watch, or four things to watch. We got little bars inside the sequencers that's running. And we have the bar up here, which is running according to whatever one of uh, whatever sequence I have uh, selected. And then we have this, which is counting the measures. So I got these two sequences gone. Let's watch what happens. See how these are matched? four bars and matched perfectly to each other and this because this is selected is running at four bars now we're going to add this one now you're going to watch this one go through two it's going to loop twice for for and this one's going to loop once so let's watch the bars on this one oh, that wasn't a little white rectangle is a select even though it was pink it was not selected so let's watch the bars now see how 
foot. This one's running twice as slow. This one's half done, that one's quarter done. This, this blue bar is following the selected one. So these have looped around already. And now the whole thing's looping around again. So you can see these are running twice as fast. These are running twice as fast as this one because these are four bar, this one's an eight bar. And they're all running at the uh, 16th uh, note uh, resolution. So there's, uh, there's a lot going on here, a lot to digest. And on the next video we'll get into actually, uh, we're going to actually record, I'll show you how I recorded these and set them up. So let's uh, let's play this out and uh, we'll just uh, play out the rest of this video as you watch me go through the sequences here. So I'm on sequence mode. I'm going to start with the bass and the drums and I'm going to Four bars. I'm going to add a four bar chord. Now wait until the end because these are sequenced at one bar. So now these are all timed together. And if I wait till the last bar, start my guitar. Now the chord progressions of the guitar are matching the bass and the chords of this. Now I can start a melody. And there you have just a black box, the acoustic guitar, and an inexpensive mono synth building up all of this within the black box. Hopefully, hopefully you'll begin to see how powerful this really is with its different kinds of samples. Uh, one of these samples I've already got rigged to the keyboard and when I play the keyboard you can see the little light, light I'm playing the keyboard, the same keyboard that the, this is except it is Except I'm playing with an external keyboard and it's working because my keyboard is sending on channel 11 and I got this set up on channel 11. If it's on any other channel it, it won't receive the keys. So it's on channel 11 
is playing across three octaves of the keyboard with a single sample played in. I played a single sample on middle C and the black box is time stretching and pitch correcting all the way across the keyboard and it sounds pretty darn good doesn't it? That's an octave above where I sampled, here's an octave below. So in the next video you're going to hear the you're going to hear how close this thing is sampling across the keyboard. So we've uh, we've taken a lot in today. We'll do a little quick review here because there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Even though we only got a couple of samples in here, there's still a lot going on for the beginner. So if you're a beginner, let's let's go through these one more time on the samples. I have three different kinds of samples in here. I got a Sample, the kick and the snare are what's called triggered. They are triggered. There are, if there's no loop on it, there's no ADSR on them, and the MIDI is turned off for all but that one, that one synth lead that, we, that you can see, blood, see the little blue bar. So those are the trigger modes where they launch and then they stop and they wait for the next trigger. Then we have there's the synthesizer patch that I made a bass for and played it in. You also see that this bass uh, no I didn't filter it. I thought I filtered it but I didn't. But the bass is on gate mode and gate mode is the one that The longer you hold down the key. Now the sample that I put in here had the, you can see it, it's like a piano, it's a piano envelope where it rises up and then falls down. I have not figured out how to get a really good loop on here of a constant sound because I can hear the end of the loop as it loops back to the front. Now, if you do this on computers, it's different, and we'll get into that later. But so we got the kick, snare, and the bass. The kick and snare are one kind of a sample. That is the trigger. The bass is the gate, and of course, the lead synths are gates too. As I hold this down, eventually the sample will just end. That's the end of the sample. Now, I made the sample so long that it's not going to cut off when I play it in. So you can see this, this sample's got a lot of uh, different little tonal characteristics going on it as it uh, as it goes through. This one's a little simpler of a of a uh, of a sample. But again, it's a it's a uh, rise and decay. So those are the, when they rise and decay like that. They're very they're very nice samples to play because because you can get all that kind of feeling in there by by uh, holding them down and getting the sample to play. Those are the and so again we got we got two triggers. We got gates, gate, 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 and then we got the guitar strum. As again, it, it won't play unless plays on because it is a clip and not a sample. Everything else in there is a sample. This guitar is the only clip. <laughs> and you can got too many sequences on here. see those that's a sequence of guitar chords and that's what's the that's what I wanted the black box for especially is when you're strumming a guitar you got all that extra 
tone just decaying out and and blending together with the next chord it's next to impossible to record one chord and then try and sequence a chord so in the black box we have an unlimited amount of space it's we're only limited to the size of the card as to how long this chord progression could be so you gotta remember that's not a sequence that's the way I recorded the entire sample in with the chord changes well mention in the comments if I confused anybody but there's a even though we're on a fairly simple sequence and setup here you can see how complex it's getting but I love this machine this is one great sampler see you on the next video